Now we're going to take a look at what is uh, grabbing the headlines here in France. And first of all, the papers uh, focusing on the Greek debt crisis. EU finance ministers meeting uh, today to try to find a solution to 12 days uh, now before that deadline. That's right. Le Figaro, uh, the conservative paper, doesn't really have that much hope in today's uh, Eurogroup meeting. If we take a look at the front page, it says the bleak scenario of a Grexit seems increasingly inevitable. Now, unsurprisingly, the conservative paper isn't that big of a fan of the leftist government that's uh, running Greece these days. The Figaro in its editorial says that Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras is the main person to blame for the current situation. His government has been blatantly inflexible. Uh, and you can see here Le Figaro is calling on the EU to protect itself from le péril grec, the Greek danger. Uh, according to Le Figaro, the EU really needs to lay down the conditions, its final conditions, on the negotiation table. Basically, it's take-it-or-leave-it conditions if a Greek refuses these conditions, well, good riddance to Greek. It's going to be a failure for Europe, that's for sure. But this is a cyst that needs to be popped, according to Le Figaro. Now, the other big story in the papers uh, here in France today is this uh, government plan here in France uh, unveiled uh, to handle the increased number of asylum seekers coming to the European Union from across the Mediterranean. That's right. That plan is actually drawing quite a lot of criticism in the press today. If we take a look at the front page of Le Monde, uh, they describe the plan as too timid. You can see it here. This is not the major overhaul of France's migrant system that's needed, according to Le Monde. The government essentially wants to, sure, improve how uh, asylum seekers Speakers are welcomed here in France, but it, essentially what it really wants to do is keep these migrants out. It wants to increase the number of uh, deportations. France, not the only EU country with uh, a repressive migrant policy, though. Uh, Libé is taking a closer look. That's right. Across Europe, countries are building barriers, higher and higher barriers. What is the cost of bunker Europe? That's what Liberation focuses on today, the uh, not only financial cost, but the human cost as well. And Libé actually teamed up with an association called the Migrant Files, and it puts forward two very interesting figures. First of all, at least 16 billion euros. That's the amount of money that migrants have spent to come to Europe since the year 2000. And another figure is 13 billion euros. That's the amount of money that EU countries have spent also since the year 2000 uh, to essentially detect migrants, build walls, and deport them. Now, in its editorial, uh, Liberation really lashes out against uh, the European attitude towards what it calls these damned souls. Uh, now, out of fear, we're pushing these people away. Uh, Liberation likens this to a drowning policy. How long is this, this policy going to last? That's what Liberation wants to know. Let's move on to something a little bit lighter now. The ecology minister, Ségolène Royal, it's incredible, this story. She's in the spotlight after making some very controversial comments about something very important. That something very important is um, Nutella. That's right, isn't Nutella, it? The, the delicious <laughs> chocolate and hazelnut spread. It almost caused a diplomatic row between Italy and France. So this is the ecology minister, Ségolène Royal. She was speaking on TV on Monday night, and she said we should stop eating Nutella because it's made with palm oil, and palm oil plantations are causing deforestation, and all this is causing a lot of damage to the environment. Now, what you've got to understand about Nutella is it's made by the Italian company Ferrero. It's one of Italy's most important products, and it's actually seen as quite a national treasure oh. in Italy. So yeah. as you can imagine, Ségolène Royal's comments really upset a lot of people in Italy. Uh, in fact, Ferrero bounced back saying that the palm oil it uses is, uh, is sourced in a responsible way. Ségolène Royal has since tr backtracked a little bit. In fact, she tweeted a thousand apologies for the row over Nutella, but in a lot of ways the damage is already done. I really like the headline here in L'Opinion. It says that not, Ségolène Royal hasn't put her foot in her mouth, she's put her foot in the jar of Nutella. She looks like she's coming out of the top of the jar, in fact, in that image there. Now, finally, the French papers, they're also focusing on the uh, 200th anniversary of the Battle of Waterloo. That's right. Now, there will be, of course, ceremonies across Europe to commemorate the 200th anniversary of Waterloo, starting, of course, in Waterloo, where there's going to be that major reenactment of the battle. You can see them here focusing on that reenactment. They're playing war. So 5,000 people are going to par uh, participate in this uh, reconstruction of the battle in front of a crowd of 20,000 people. Now, a lot of VIPs are going to be there, but not very many French VIPs, it must be said. France is actually going to be represented by its ambassador to Belgium. Seems like France wants to keep a low profile. Why, why is that? Well, you can read more about it in La Croix, which points out that 200 years later, Waterloo is still quite a touchy subject in here because, after all, 
it was a major defeat for France. It was a humiliation for France in many ways. Uh, what's interesting, though, is it's uh, still a major topic here in France. And Le Figaro, uh, in another article, kind of rewrites history today and says, what if Napoleon had won Waterloo? What would <laughs> Europe be like today? It's very interesting because... After all, the Battle of Waterloo was one of the decisive events of the 18th century, uh, 19th century rather. It really marked uh, the rest of the, well, the next 200 years. But what's interesting is Napoleon may have lost that battle, but in many ways he's also won the war. Uh, if we take a look at an article in Le Monde, it talks about Napoleon the French Superman. 200 years later, he still a, a major star across the world. People are obsessed with him. Uh, Le Monde talks about Napoleon mania. Now, Peter, people either love him or hate him, but no one is indifferent to him, so he might have lost that battle, but he's still, he's still a rock star today. That's very true. We'll have a lot more coverage on that over the next few days on France 24. Flo, thanks very much.